right, please turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 7. This is the time in our service where we get to participate in the Lord's Supper and how appropriate that we get to do that together on our first week back. In Hebrews chapter 7, we'll be looking at verses 23 through 28. And for the time being, as we're taking communion once a month instead of each week, this means that each month, those of us who know Jesus, who love Jesus, who obey Jesus, Christians, that we get to remember and proclaim Jesus' death on the cross that he died under the wrath of God for hellbound, undeserving sinners like us. Let me read our passage for us. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 23 says this, The former priests, on the one hand, existed in greater numbers because they were prevented by death from continuing But Jesus, on the other hand, because he continues forever, holds his priesthood permanently. Therefore, he is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily like those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. Because he did this, he did once for all when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints a son made perfect forever. These verses reveal that Jesus is a self-sufficient priest. He is an everlasting priest, a perfectly holy priest. Jesus is even, by being called son, an exalted divine priest. Jesus is a more excellent priest in every way than the priests who preceded him. Verses 23 and 24 tell us that Jesus is unlike previous priests by the very fact that he lives forever. Those other priests did not live forever. God's former priests died and stayed dead. By contrast, Jesus died and was raised from the dead. And Jesus' resurrection is why verse 24 says that he continues forever. This is why he keeps his position as high priest. And there is no more need for earthly priests now to mediate for God's people any longer. Verse 25 says that his unending life enables him to save forever those who choose to humbly draw near to God through him, and not by any other way. Those who choose to draw near to God through Christ, not by their own good deeds, through Christ, not by their parents, through Christ, not by a spouse, not by partaking in sacraments, or any other way except Christ alone. Only on the basis of Christ's sacrifice, which we see in verse 27, was actually himself. He didn't offer up sacrifices, but he offered up himself, his own blood. It is on that basis, Christian, and that basis alone, that you can lay claim to an eternal salvation an eternal salvation, not a temporal salvation like former priests, 
that required another sacrifice the next day or the next year on the Day of Atonement, but an eternal salvation, no more sacrifices, no more offerings on your behalf if you believe in Jesus are needed. That is what we are remembering. That is what we are proclaiming right now. We all do deserve to die under the just condemnation of God. His anger toward us for our rebellious refusal to worship him should have fallen on all of us and not on Christ. And those of you here who do not obey Christ, who do not believe God, who do not love God, who refuse to worship him, God's wrath, the truth is, God's wrath still does abide on you. His furious judgment awaits you and even could be unleashed on you before you leave this building. And so with that in mind, I plead with you to repent, to repent what's keeping you from coming to Christ. Whatever it is, it is certainly not worth holding on to. Those who have not trusted Christ can turn to this everlasting priest, this everlasting savior, who is so gracious to give as a free gift, eternal life for sins, in exchange for sins he did not commit. We can have a life that we did not earn and we do not deserve. And so for those of us who do trust and obey Jesus, then when the men come by and give us uh, communion that'll come in a, a little single packet, uh, take joyfully, remembering that Christ has atoned for all of your sins. And those of you who do not yet trust Christ, talk to me, talk to somebody around you. We would love to tell you more about how you can have this eternal life by believing in Jesus to explain more about the gospel. But for this time that is for God's people, for believers to remember and proclaim Jesus' death, we would just ask that you not take communion, just let those things pass by you and consider what's been said. Consider this passage that we just read. When you're ready, you can take communion on your own. Men, please come serve us.